Okay, today we're going to talk about the so-called Laffer Curve. The Laffer Curve is a favorite demonstration of supply-side economists uh, to indicate the relationship between tax rates and tax revenues in a given economy. So how we set this up is on one axis we plot the tax revenues that would be collected by the government. On the opposite axis, we plot the tax rates that the government is charging its people. So what Laffer, an economist, said was that when the tax rate is zero, of course there will be zero dollars collected in tax revenues because the government isn't taxing any income. On the opposite extreme, at a tax rate of 100%, uh, Laffer suggested that the government would also take in zero dollars in tax revenues because there would be no incentive for anybody to do any work, to earn any income, if that income was going to be taken away from them immediately. So, uh, what follows from that is that somewhere between zero percent taxes and 100 percent taxes is some optimal tax rate or combination of taxes that will result in the highest possible tax revenue. And so we'll label that point the maximum amount of tax revenues that the government can possibly generate. And so there is a point beyond 0% taxation where as we initially increase the tax rate, what happens is we see our tax revenues increasing accordingly. And then we reach an apex, a point beyond which increasing the level of taxation would actually reduce the government's tax revenues. Beyond that point, the tax code becomes so burdensome that there's little incentive to invest and there's little incentive to work those marginal hours. And so actually what happens is that beyond this optimal tax rate, the tax base, that is the income that is going to be taxed, will decline. Because the tax base decline is so dramatic, despite the fact that that tax base is multiplied times a tax rate that is in fact increasing, the outcome of this equation is a decline in total tax revenues. Now, it should be noted that this only holds true for this right portion of the Laffer curve that portion of the Laffer curve that is beyond the apex. That is, once the government has maximized its level of tax revenues, if it were to increase its tax rates beyond that point, it would actually take in less in revenues. Uh, in the late 1970s, it was argued that the United States was operating somewhere on this side of the Laffer curve. In other words, the tax rates were so high that it was actually reducing the level of tax revenue that the government was taking in. In fact, supply-side economists argue that if the government reduced the tax rates, then that would actually move us along the Laffer curve and actually end up increasing the total tax revenues. And why would it do that? Well, it's the exact opposite of this story. By reducing taxes, that increases the incentive to work and the level of productive activity in the economy, so the tax base, the taxable income, would increase. Now, that would be multiplied, of course, by a tax rate that was lower, because we've reduced the tax rates, but the taxable income increased uh, to such a degree that despite the decline in tax rates, tax revenues actually increased. Now, many economists today would argue that we have swung over to this side of the Laffer curve. In other words, tax rates have been reduced to a point that increasing taxes would not, in fact, increase tax revenues, but a further increase in the current tax structure would actually increase tax revenues. Now, it should be noted that the Laffer curve only demonstrates the relationship between tax rates and tax revenues. It does not indicate that the government ought to adopt a tax system that produces the highest possible revenue. 
That's, of course, a decision by governments. There are other macroeconomic policies uh, and goals and policies that the government may want to consider beyond maximum tax revenue.